Hey guys, it's Done for Games, and anyone who's looked into it at all will realize that Final Fantasy XI, as we have it today, is a far cry from the game that most remember. Biggest amongst those changes are, in my opinion, travel. The vast, vast world of Vanadil, spanning fake miles of space, can now be hopped around with ease thanks to survival books, uh, warping between home point crystals, but the massive and awesome and dangerous zones still pose a huge time investment when it comes to getting from point A to point B. Even that is still a lot easier than it used to be though, because no longer are telepoint chocobo vendors or city stables the only ways that you can get on a chocobo or any kind of mount. Now, after a short and mildly amusing quest involving the taming of a wild raptor, you can summon a mount wherever they're rideable. Even the chocobo whistle, which was obtained through a month-long super grueling process of chocobo breeding, is second in convenience to this new mount system. Just saying the word mount in Final Fantasy XI sounds weird. We never got mounts. You have chocobos. That's all it's ever been. You just got a chocobo. Final Fantasy XIV adapted the new mount system, and it seems to be working fine in that game, but it just feels weird in Final Fantasy XI. <laughs> Having said all that, I, I just now did the quest. I've been back for months, and I've just kind of avoided it. It felt too weird. Travel in Final Fantasy XI was one of the reasons that the game was so special. The world felt huge, just massive, and it used to be that before setting out, you truly had to decide on what adventure you were going to take part in that day, what supplies you'd need in terms of like keys for doors, food, any other random items you might need. I, I don't know. It just felt weird to be able to summon them out anywhere. It felt too new. Even though I completely take advantage of the teleport warping between home points like every day i as soon as i restarted the game i was like i'm doing that i had no problem with that still it, it's just so easy now the chocobo whistle had limits you could only use it like once every half hour or something and to get it was like a pain in the ass i earned that thing but an unresistible combo platter of available mounts finally made me do the quest. A, a crawler from the logging campaign, and Fenrir, the unholy summon himself. Ever since Fenrir was initially released, it's been a huge joke that Tartar should be able to ride him anyway, and now they can. My buddy used to throw out like thousand damage spinning dives with his Dark Knight all the time, and I'd be like, well, whatever, I've got my once a minute Dark Knight Fenrir. And it kind of like struck a chord with him, it bothered him a little bit, so like, I'd say it all the time, I made a macro. To do party chat every time I did Eclipse Bite, it's like, come on, Fenrir, my once a minute Dark Knight, Eclipse Bite! <laughs> I get so pissed off. <laughs> yeah. The crawler is just obtained through campaign points, and man, is that thing hilarious. I mean, it just like slithers along, I'm riding it backwards. This is something I never knew I wanted, but obviously, super important in my life. But Fenrir, Fenrir will make you work for it. As he should, he's Fenrir! With Summoner being my first 75, and Fenrir basically defining the job for many years, this fight has always been one of my big time memories of Final Fantasy XI. It turns out to get this mount, you have to do the old damn thing again. The whole same quest to get your moon bauble and fight Fenrir again. That means fighting every level 65 avatar battle, trading in all their whispers to Lee Poppy, and I just was pumped. I was super excited to do this again. I haven't done it in years. <laughs> so I bring them up all the time, but the level 20 solo avatar battles are some of my favorite memories from this game. They're super intense, incredibly rewarding, just hard to beat, especially if you have no money and you're just like, eking your way through the minimum requirements to like try and do the fight. My hands still sweat when I hear that When I'd show up in parties with all six summons at like level 30, I felt like a badass. I was like, I did that, I got them all. Pokemon! The level 65 versions of the fight were the original way to obtain the avatars when they were initially released. And you needed a full party to beat that easily. They were really hard fights. Some jobs could solo at level 75, but it wasn't easy, it was tough. You like had to work for it. Then after beating all of those, you could use the reward to trade them in and fight Fenrir, who was just awful. It's <laughs> just absolutely terrible. I only know of the five summoner method actually being successful to beat this guy. Maybe six black mages could do something. I don't know. Six black mages could basically beat anything in the game, but I only ever knew of the full summoner, which felt right. It was like, oh, the only way we can beat Fenrir is with a bunch of freaking summoners all taking them on at the same time. It was awesome. I was like a level 40 summoner sitting around and I, I heard, I saw Fenrir. I was like, that's amazing. I need that. I looked him up and realized what I had to do. And I was like, the only way I can do this is by beating him with a bunch of other summoners. That's so cool. It's always five Leviathans coming in like... Somebody would die. Awesome. Every player attempting the fight needed their own Moo Bobble. I mean, they had to do the quest. They had to fight all the other summons. Summoners can make a living off of this, selling their services for the fight. Normally, I'd vote my 
way against paying your way through any kind of fight. But with Fenrir, if your only job was level 40 summoner and you just wanted to be all you could be, it was the only way you were getting it done. I held off to like level 60, I got my artifact here, I'm like, I need Fenrir. I cannot go from 60 to 75 without Fenrir in any of these parties. And I, man, it was awesome. It was my highest job. It wasn't like I was going to be able to beat Fenrir. So I saved up, hired my five summoners, badass. So I couldn't wait to fight the avatars again. I've been playing around with their much harder versions for artifact upgrades. It's like the I-19 level. But I haven't fought the level 65 versions in forever. It was it was super depressing. Not just because they're incredibly easy with basically any level 99 right now, which they are, but because it reminded me why fights like this used to be so intense. Their attacks are slow, methodical, long delays in between these heavy hitting buffs, debuffs, or just straight up damage moves. You're never exactly sure when the two hour is going to hit. The new versions, like most endgame fights right now, everything just spams everything. It's just constant AoE, stun goes, cleave moves, erase goes, paralyze goes. It just balancing the TP feed to an enemy used to be so crucial, so important. Finding out the best way to do that and still win was what made analyzing boss strategies so great. It was still fun to fight them again, but a little sad when comparing them to the insanity that the new versions are. It made me realize why that new system is so frustrating. I'm just constantly kind of like enduring damage and nonsense. It used to be that you had to plan for certain moves, I had to plan for certain things. Now I'm just constantly going through bullshit. Anyways though, the Avatar battles are still cool, it's just they're so easy now, and you can see why they used to be hard. The music still makes me tense, and then I, I'm like beating on them as a summoner. I'm like, ah, you suck. Fenrir is still a badass, but soloing him as a half-assed geared summoner with only Garbuncle was still a breeze. I mean, the fight was once the hardest fight I'd done in this game. So sad. But the reward was worth it. Lee Poppy granted me my Fenrir mount, and I rode off into the sunset, and it's it's pretty much what I always imagined. I'm riding around on Fenrir. Fenrir's a little smaller when I like summon him as a mount than when I summon him, which is kind of funny. But I guess that makes sense. It is still a huge pain in the ass to get through Terahemurai Canal to Fenrir. It's never gotten any easier. I That sucks. Now I've got the home point crystal so I can go back, I guess. But Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of the new mount system. I know it's been out for a while now, but I, I finally just did the quest. Hit me up with your favorite Avatar battle stories, and whether or not if you thought these guys are the old story, the old the old quest and mission fight was lame, and the new style of constant two hours exploding in your face is just more interesting. Like the video if you've ever done the Avatar battles at level 20 and got your ass kicked. And please subscribe if you're new. I've got plenty of videos coming each week, and I really hope to see you guys back. So, <laughs> thanks for watching. I've heard, like, crazy stories of of level 75 parties. I know there's like a million ways you can beat Fenrir now, but level 75 parties would come up with these insane strategies to beat Fenrir with like a standard six person party. But it was really hard and it was way easy to just do it with 75 summoners, five 75 summoners. 